Um, no. Is it working? Mm -hmm. So we're online. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much that music's gonna clash with it though. I don't think you hear it. Microphones pick a lot up. So we can talk. There's one person on. Huh? There's one person. Welcome everybody to Great Lakes Beach. Um, this is kind of a question and answer. Uh, today in the store, we had a person come in from Ann Arbor. He had one swarm that he caught yesterday, and he had two in his yard today. So he was coming in and getting some more sets, setups for hives. He's never taken a class, and he doesn't know much about bees, but he is super enthusiastic about it. Um, he had three young children that were and his wife were all all excited about it so hopefully he does okay when he goes back i did i gave him kind of a crash course on what to do and uh, he is going to go online and take our classes that we have because it's too late to get to our regular season classes but he's going to take our online classes and try to learn enough to get him through the summer and i just told him to Call us if you have a problem. So same way with anybody that's online that's watching us. If you have a question or a problem with the bees and it's something we can help you with, just feel free to call. and uh, We'll be here to try to help you out what we can. But swarms are occurring right now. Uh, as you'll notice, most everybody's probably got at least two boxes on. Uh, we put three boxes on two hives last night. So we have advanced to to three boxes on two of the hives, and then we have four boxes with two high. But uh, now you have to really kind of watch them because there's a lot of the wildflowers that are coming out now and a lot of nectar's being brought in, and they're increasing in size. All of our hives were just covered with brood. So you want to keep an eye on them. What about honeybound? One of them was honeybound. Yeah, we actually had we had a honeybound one, which means that they were compressed enough in the hive that where you know normally you have a frame and it has the bee bridge that's around the top and the comb is in the middle that's for the brood. Uh, there was enough bees hatched out in that and getting full enough in that hive that the area where the queen should be laying in the center of a frame under the honey bridge, that was all being totally filled in with uh, nectar, which doesn't really hurt anything, but it will start to affect the area that the queen can lay her eggs. So if you start pulling out a bunch of frames and you start seeing that the, that your, uh, not your first box, but probably your second box, when you start seeing that second box, when you pull a frame out and it looks like a honey bridge, but everything is filled in with shiny uh, nectar, that means that your hive is getting honey bound. It means there are more bees bringing in nectar than the queen is laying uh, brood. So in that case, it would be advisable, and that's what we did: is put another box on last night. Or those swarm. Or the, yeah, or those swarm, and swarming is occurring right now. So uh, hopefully it's not your hives, or if it's somebody else's, hopefully they fly over to your house and you get a free swarm. But they are they are swarming right now. Um, especially if, if your boxes aren't full. Remember when you check them, when you pull out your frames, your first and tenth frame, when everything else in the middle is pretty well full, but your first frame, 
first frame and your tenth frame are getting so that they're starting to build comb on the outside up against the wood, that's when you need to get another box on and get it filled up and your bees should take off like crazy. By the looks of everything, we are getting a lot of honey made this year. The bees are real active. Um, I think I've only had two calls of a person that, that has lost their queen and everybody else has just, just been doing real well. So, but you do have to watch it for um, swarming. Okay, so um, everybody that's watching YouTube and Facebook Live, ask us some questions if you have any questions about beekeeping right now. That's what we're here for is to try to answer any questions you might have. So fire off a question if you have something beekeeping related and we'll try to answer it best we can. Did anybody have any problems with the wind blowing any of their hives over? Well, this last week we had quite a bunch of wind that possibly could have blown a lid off or, uh, uh, you know, tipped your hive over. Hopefully that didn't happen to you, but in most cases, everything is pretty well stuck on it, stuck together on it, so it doesn't really go off too bad. But is there any questions tonight? Obviously, I think everybody realizes now that you don't need sugar water in your hive. You can leave that out now. They're getting all the nectar they need to, to get. Pollen is on the pine trees like crazy. It's like a dust storm blowing off pine trees now. It's almost like in the spring that the, the pollen in the buds from a tree are as bad on your driveway as the leaves are in the fall. But that pollen that you see floating through the air and possibly on the hood of your truck or hood of your car, if you leave your car out at night, that's the pollen that the bees are taking back to their hive and they're storing it. And remember they store pollen in their cells, but they only fill it up about halfway. And you'll see that when you pull a frame out when you pull a frame out and you're you're looking at it, you'll see that there'll be certain areas that will be just golden yellow. They don't look like wax and they're not cap rude, but it's just pollen. And the pollen mostly comes from from other things, but a lot of it just comes from the pine trees. And there's so much of it now that the bees don't have any trouble getting it any any direction that they turn and fly to they're going to come up with pollen which is good because pollen is what regulates the speed at which the queen is laying her eggs if she's got plenty of pollen in there she knows that the worker bees will have enough pollen to mix with bee bread and a little bit of honey and feed the brand new uh young that just that are just emerging need to be fed for a short period of time and that pollen is what the queen knows if there's a lot of pollen in the hive then she can just lay like crazy and that's that's what she seems to be doing right now they're all doing very well so i hope everybody's is doing good all right. First time beekeeping, I have a Kenyan top bar hive because I'm in a wheelchair. My question is, this winter, how do I feed my bees? Oh, boy. Yeah. So um, trying to feed your bees in a top bar is pretty tough because um, there's no universal feeders or universal dimensions to top bars. So you're going to have to um, you're going to have to devise something to go into a top bar. Top bars are difficult uh, to beekeep in because there are no, um, like for instance, in our supply store here, we don't have any supplies for top bars. 
because the dimensions are usually different and because you have those angled sides, none of the feeders will fit in them. Um, you can't get a nuke because if you get a, a five frame or a three frame nuke, um, it won't fit in your hive. So you have to figure out how to transfer your bees if you do a nuke. So usually they go with a package for a, for a top bar. Um, but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make something uh, in order to do that because even if you went online to look for a top bar feeder, doesn't mean if you found one it's gonna fit your top bar because there's no universal dimension like the Langstroth hives. So you're you're uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to come up with something. Unfortunately, um, that may be as much as taking out a couple of frames and putting a aluminum pie pan in the bottom and putting a whole bunch of sugar in it over the winter or um, just making sure that your bees are packing in the, the honey so that they have enough stores so that you don't have to feed them. Uh, questions, how often should we be checking now that we put a second brood box on a nuke purchased this year? Once or twice a month. <coughs> um, so we would recommend that you check your hive right now about every 20 days because you've got 21 days for the life cycle of a worker bee from when the egg is laid to when they emerge. And um, you need to get in there and make sure that you don't miss that cycle because if for some reason the queen, uh, if they split and you didn't notice it or the queen, something happens to her, they kill her and replace her or something else killed her. Maybe you squished her last time you were in the hive for whatever reason, you wanna make sure you're checking it often enough so that you don't miss that window of opportunity to be able to tell what's going on between your, you know, you, you look at your larva, you look at your cap brood and you look at your eggs. And as long as you see eggs in the hive all the time, you don't ever have to find the queen. You see her signs. Um, as long as you find capped or uh, C-shaped larva every time you're in the hive, you're pretty good bet that she's still in there. As long as you see it this time and you see it next time, right? If you see it this time, and not next time, then there might be some sort of a problem. And, and so your objective is, is to catch that uh, uh, timeline between when an egg is laid, when you see eggs, and between when there's cat brood or no cat brood. So you want to catch that timeline in there to be able to, to try to solve problems. Um, if you wait more than 21 days, all the eggs that are laid the last time you saw them could go all the way through development, hatch, and go out and start working. And remember in beekeeping, your hive is either growing or it's dying. That's the two things that's going on with your beehive. Always ever growing or dying. It does not maintain the same, should not, uh, does not maintain the same uh, population all summer long at any point in spring, summer, or fall. So your objective is to keep it growing. So you have to make sure that you watch that brood pattern and those eggs and that larva and that cat brood and catch it before it just empties out. Because by the time you get in, and you find out there's no eggs, there's no larva, and there's no cat brood, you have a shorter window to be able to requeen that hive, whether you use eggs from another hive or you have to buy another queen. So I hope that helps. Keep keep in mind that if if you're just observing your hive from the outside, uh, as Rifton said, if you're just looking at the bees on the outside and you go, oh, I'm seeing 3,000 bees flying around on the outside all the time, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong. If your queen died a week ago and she had 15,000 eggs in cat brood, those eggs are going to mature and emerge and continually feed what you see coming out the front of the entrance. So even though it looks like you've still got a lot of bees, if you don't take the time to just make sure that she's alive, uh, you may go for two or up to three weeks and see a huge amount of bees flying in and out, but there will be no queen in it. And then all of a sudden, your graph will drop right off because those bees have meet, reached their six weeks uh, lifespan and they're going to be dying off fast and no new ones are going to be coming up. So even though you see a lot of bees on the outside, it doesn't necessarily mean that the queen is there. It means that the eggs that she laid before she died are still hatching and still emerging and coming outside. So you do have to look in your hive. But um, we looked in our hive last night 
all of them. And out of all the ones we looked at, we saw no beetles yet, not one beetle. Uh, ants were nothing. Beetles were nothing. Uh, mites we have not checked for yet, but the way that they acted, they act, they act calm. Usually, usually the bees, if you open up the top and look at underneath the screen, the bees will be kind of, they'll be moving around, but they'll be quiet. They'll be quite calm. That means that they're content, that their queen is in there and they're content. If you open the top and right away they're at a hard buzz and they're frantically running around, there's a chance that your queen is not in there because they get real restless when there's no queen. So watch for that. But just because the bees are flying around the outside doesn't mean that the queen is in there. So you do have to do a hive inspection, at least a few frames to find larvae. So, Justin, you can get in your hive once a week if you want, or even more often. I don't think that it, we've never had an issue with it bothering the hives. So, you don't have to worry too much about disturbing them too much. Uh, Stephanie, how will I know when time to add a honey super? Both my new hives are working on their second box. Uh, same, same way you do it with a deep. You look at the outside two frames, and when they start to fill those outside two frames up, and uh, start working on those and drawing wax out on them, it's time to add the next box. With honey supers, you can pull the super when it gets full and put a new one on if you want, but uh, it's a little easier for us just to gauge honey by the end of the year to just keep adding supers. Hi, Shannon. Um, go ahead and shoot off some questions if you, got, if you have any questions for YouTube or on Facebook. Everybody that's watching, uh, hi, what can you do to protect your hives when a heavy storm with wind is in the forecast? Put a cinder block on the roof on the top of the hive or get the one inch little ratchet straps and wrap that right around the hive. You can either wrap that around the hive. Uh, chances are if it's a deep or two and they've got a lot of honey in there, it weighs a good amount. So just attaching the lid to your hive should be enough. So... Uh, I did have a question online earlier that I was going to answer in this uh, on this Q&A. We had a, a, a viewer earlier in the week message me on Facebook, um, said that she has supersedure cells and swarm cells in her hive. They're making queen cells, so they're making supersedure cells on the frame. They're making the supersedure cells up here in the sides, the little queen cups that hang off up here in the sides. And they're also making swarm cells along the bottom. And she didn't know what to do. So my suggestion to her was, right, because you don't know if they're swarming or if they are trying to make a new queen. So first I told her, go in and try to find the queen, right? If you can find the queen, then chances are we're leaning more towards swarming because if there's already a queen in there, and they're making a new queen. It sounds like maybe the queen that's currently in there and some of those bees, half of those bees are going to leave soon. Or uh, they're going to kill the queen for some reason because something's wrong and they're going to replace her. And you just happen to catch it in that process where you found a queen and you saw the queen cells that are going to replace her. Um, she ended up not finding the queen. So she wanted to know what to do. And in the, in the instance that... She couldn't find the queen. I suggested she just leave them alone. If they're making supersedure cells, they're just replacing their queen, right? Leave them alone. Let them do that process. If by chance they're trying to swarm and those are swarm cells, then she's going to be less risky scraping off emergency queen cells and scraping off their only chance for them to requeen. It's going to be less risky than it is to leave it and possibly let it swarm. Because if they swarm right, they should still have those queen cells that are coming up, that are in the little capped queen cells now. Those queens should come out and emerge. And if they do it right, half or so of the bees, they should leave behind. So she isn't necessarily going to lose her hive. But yes, they may split in half and they may swarm. So instead of scraping off those cells and, and possibly stopping the chance that they can remake a queen, their only chance they can remake a queen, she's going to risk it. And she's going to let it go and see what happens. And I don't know what's happened yet. That was a couple of days ago. So, but um, why did it make? Why did she make queen cells? And why were there supersedure cells? 
you make a queen cell because your colony is getting too crowded in its box. So number one swarm point cell. swarm cells. Number one point is get another box on there. If she was swarming. She couldn't tell if they were swarming or if they were requeening because they had them in the side of the frame and on the bottom. So that's kind of a tough one to, to figure out because usually it's pretty obvious when you pull a frame out. If the queen cells are in the side of a frame, they're just requeening. If they're along the bottom of the frame, they're trying to kick out a swarm. But she had them in both. And I don't know why they were making them in both. That does not happen that often. So she's just going to have to wait and see, unfortunately, on that one. Uh, we have a YouTube question. My first hive, I just powdered sugared them and six mites dropped. Everyone treats differently. What do you do? Uh, so that's a YouTube question. If I powdered sugared and six mites dropped, I can guarantee you there's more than six mites in your hive. And I would start doing your treatments on a regular basis because you have Varroa mite in there now. And your objective is to be able to keep the population down on your Varroa destructor so that your population of your beehive can, can continue to grow. So you have them. Um, if, if they ever show up in our hive, we start treating just as if it was, it was a thousand bees or a thousand mites or two mites. If they have mites, we start our treating regiments. So we keep up our powdered sugar every once in a while. Uh, we do the drone, the drone brood frames. The drone brood frames. These lime green, these are uh, drone brood. So these are all bigger cells. So it makes them draw out the drone brood. You put this in a hive. The queen lays eggs across this. Uh, they start to lay in all their drone brood. And then once all that drone brood is capped, because Varroa Destructor prefers drone brood to lay their eggs, um, once all that's capped, you go in the hive, you pull this frame out, and you put it in the freezer. And you effectively knock down the reproductive cycle of that Varroa mite significantly in the hive because when you put one of these in, any Varroa in the hive is going to try to focus their reproduction onto this frame. Um, you can do uh, strip treatments, Apivar Life, Apigard, Apilife. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, different kinds of treatments you can do. Um, you can do the oxalic acid wand. So this is the oxalic acid wand. You hook it to a battery. You put a little scoop of oxalic acid and you literally treat for like a minute in a hive, follow the directions because they change often. Um, you can do an oxalic acid treatment. Whatever you end up doing to a hive for your Varroa destructor, Varroa mite um, to keep them down, it rotate it. Uh, integrated pest management, the IPM, the way to be most effective for dealing with anything like that is going to be rotate your methods. So do your powdered sugar again. Now, I don't know if you did a mite roll when you did the powdered sugar or you dusted the whole hive um, just as a, as a preventative treatment um, with your powdered sugar. But either way, um, I would do a powdered sugar treatment to the whole hive. I would maybe do an oxalic acid this month, maybe next month do a drone brood frame, maybe the following month an ape of our life strip or something like that. But rotate your methods. Dusted. Okay. So rotate your methods um, and then use your sticky boards, right? With those grids on them, peel that tape off with their sticky board, slide it under your screen bottom and, and count the mites that start to come off a day or two after you do your treatments and find out which treatments are working really good on your hive and which one's producing dead Varroa on the bottom and which ones aren't. You can do, um, you could do uh, essential oil foggers and there's lots of different ways to do it. They all work in their own way, and that's that's the point to rotating your treatments is to keep those treatments effective, right? Um, I'm going to jump over to Facebook here real quick and answer this question. Uh, ants are taking up residency in two of our hives. What do we do? Um, so if you have an ant problem and you have a four-legged stand that they're sitting on, you can set each leg in like a pie pan of water. Uh, the ants won't cross the water. Ants can be a problem. Um, generally speaking, there's a lot of remedies. I've seen diatomaceous earth. I've seen uh, cinnamon. I've seen all kinds of things online, and I don't. I've never tried all of them, so I can't speak to their effectiveness. But I do know others who have tried different remedies without a lot of luck. Ultimately, in the end, if they re become a serious problem, we end up getting those red, round aluminum cans of Raid. They're a little puck. 
and you punch a hole in the end and the ants can go in, the bees can't get into it. The ants will grab a little bit of that poison. They'll take it back to wherever their nest is and generally that'll fix the problem. Um, your other option is to move your hives, get it away because if the ants are hitting it hard, it's probably within a certain distance of a nice you know, ant nest and that proximity is probably making them come after a little bit heavier. So ants can be a little bit of a problem. Generally, if there's, you know, if there's some, it's not too big of a deal. But if they really start getting in there, it could be a problem. Uh, jumping over to YouTube here real quick, answering or getting a question over here. Um, how do I recapture my 10 Asian hornets that got out? <laughs> nice. <laughs> terrible, 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 terrible. You're not going to catch them. Um, what should we be looking for when checking for mites and other pests in the hive? Um, right now you're looking for varroa mites, varroa destructors. You can do mite tests, mite dust rolls to try to see. We don't do mite dust rolls because I treat our hives, uh, uh, without chemicals, but we do normal IPM treatments to our hives anyway, regularly, whether we see them or not, because I don't care if I see them, it doesn't matter how many of them there are. If I see them, they're in there. They're probably going to get them at some point or another. So we just do our regular treatments. Anyway, it doesn't hurt the bees. Now I may not do a chemical treatment uh, or some heavy duty treatment unless I know they're in there and I'm having an issue, but generally we'll do the, the powdered sugar dust. We'll do an oxalic acid treatment. We'll do a drone brood frame. We'll do some of those things just to, just to the hive, no matter what. But you can do a sugar mite roll, a dust roll to be able to find your mites. Um, different people have different thresholds for treating. Some people think if they only get three mites when they do a dust roll, that, uh, that that's not enough to do a treatment. I say once there's varroa in a hive, I'm going to start doing treatments because they, they can become a problem quick. Uh, over to YouTube. Do you keep the chemical treatments out of their food supply or the honey that will be harvest, uh, harvested contaminated with the treatment? So there are one or two products that are chemical treatments, your strips and your, your pucks, your gels, different things like that, that do say that you can put them on with marketable honey. But for the majority of those chemicals that you're going to use for mite treatments, you don't want to put it on while you have honey on. Um, read the directions. I'd love to give you more input on that. But the backs of the different kinds of chemicals uh, all have very specific directions for use. They will tell you whether or not you should put them on during marketable honey. And those directions can change reasonably often. Um, so I never get used to what they say because I don't want to be telling somebody the wrong information. So uh, my suggestion would be get online, look at the manufacturer's directions for some of the different kinds of treatments, or come into a store and look at the backs of them and read the directions and find out for yourself which ones you feel uh, a little bit more comfortable with using if you need to go to the chemical treatments. I hope that helps. Um, Facebook, we bought a three pound package of bees in the spring, our first bees. We've last checked them about three weekends ago, we found the queen, good. They've got their first deep, almost fully drawn. There's a good pattern of brood. I have to click see more, Stacy. Can I do it? Yes. Um, good pattern of brood. What should we be doing on our next check or looking for? I was thinking our first check for mites would be mid-July. I would be checking for mites now. Um, we're in June. There's no reason that we shouldn't be looking for mites now. We should not We should be treating for mites now. Do a powdered sugar dust. Do an oxalic acid. Do something in June uh, for, your, for your varroa destructor, your var varroa mite treatments. I would do those now. I'd do one now. I'd do one next month too. Um, we do them lighter in the summer and then heavier in the fall because that's when the mite production is, starts to go up on an increase. But I would say if you're getting in, if you got in your hive three weekends ago, you found the queen and they were almost done with that first box, obviously you're probably going to be ready to put a second box on ASAP with the way that the bees have been growing. Um, you're going to look for, make sure you don't see any hive beetles running around while you're in the hive. You might want to put a $3 or $5, uh, disposable beetle trap, uh, the beetle jails or the beetle traps in just to be on the safe side. We have one in every one of our hives just so I don't have to worry about varroa or uh, about hive beetle. If I put them in three bucks, I am going to catch them if they show up in the hive without me having to look for them. Um, you look at your wings of your bees, make sure none of them are all crinkled up or twisted for just deformed wing virus. 
if you see any wings that are all crumpled up or, or twisted up, um, that's usually a result of some sort of a disease or ailment coming from a varroa mite infestation. Um, just generally look for the health of the hive. Make sure they have honey, which they should have plenty of nectar and honey right now, and pollen. Make sure you see eggs and larvae and brood, because three weekends ago, you saw the queen, but that doesn't mean something couldn't have happened to her between then and now. So make sure you either see her or you see eggs. As long as you see the eggs, the little bitty flecks down in the bottoms of those cells, you know, she's in there and you know, everything's good. So just take a, take a cruise down through and look for stuff. Weakest hive is three years old, made an emergency cell three and a half weeks ago. We checked yesterday, no queen, no eggs. Can we combine the bees with another hive? What is the best way to do a combine? Hold on, let me get Seymour here. Seymour's not working. There it is, combine the hive. Oh, Seymour, hive. Um, Shannon Jones. So first of all, I would tell you, don't be too quick yet to dismiss because we have many a times given eggs to a hive to requeen, they've made queen cells, uh, emergency queen cells, opened those emergency queen cells, and we gave up. We thought that hive wasn't gonna make a queen. Whatever happened, whatever they tried to do didn't work. We need to put in there and we're putting the new queen in and all of a sudden we either see eggs or we find the queen. So I will tell you with those processes, give it a slightly longer than you're comfortable with because Bees are pretty good at requeening, and we have noticed on more than one occasion where we gave up on the hive doing its own requeen and tried to do something else, and lo and behold, they did it. Uh, we were just a little too quick to it. However, I will say, if for some reason you don't see eggs and you don't notice a queen, you can do a combine. You just did a combine this, this spring, yeah. so what'd you- We did two doing? combines this spring, and the way that you do that is you take your hive that has a queen in it and is doing well, and you want to add another hive to it that does not have a queen in it. Lots of bees, but no queen. You take two pieces of newspaper, and you take the lid off, the good hive, the queen, the queened hive. You take your... Um, inner screen cover off and you take your lid off from that hive so your bees are right there you take the newspaper and I use two pieces of newspaper and it worked perfect you lay it down on a table and take a knife and in this piece of newspaper that's covering this hive you'll cut about four five or six inch long slits in it don't, don't rip the paper open, just cut the slit in it so there is a slit. Take that paper, lay on the hive, let the paper overhang the hive, then take your other box that you're combining. So remember the queen's in the bottom, no queen in the box here. Pick that box up and set it directly onto the hive that you're going to enable to have that queen go through there. Don't put your screen or lid on that one. But when you put the second hive on, and it's this high now, then put your inner screen cover on the top of that, and then put your lid on that. So technically it looks like it's a two box high hive. It will take three days, three days, two and a half, three days, four days. And at the end of three days, I wanted to see if they had went through there. Well, what happens is, is that the pheromone from the queen in the bottom box drifts up and it goes through the little slits that you put in with your knife and it filters up into the hive above. So now the bees, the worker bees that are all in the top of the hive, are smelling the pheromone from the queen underneath. And just like when you put a new queen in, you leave her in there for like two days before she will emerge out and go down into the hive, bought the same theory. It takes about two days to leave that box sitting on there. And the ones that I did, I wanted to see if it worked. 
So I lifted, just tipped the box up to look at the newspaper and the whole center of that newspaper in an area about that big was completely gone. They completely chewed the paper up in a circle and they were going back and forth from the bottom box to the top box through that hole of paper. They hadn't eaten all the paper off, but they were heading back and forth through it. So I said at that point, there's no fighting going on. They all seem content. So then I set the top box off, peeled the paper off, got the junk paper unstuck off the box. It's kind of a nuisance. Pulled the paper off, threw the paper away, set the box right on top. That's combined. Works fine. Combines are really fairly easy um, as long as you do put the paper in there to delay the process of them immediately going at each other. And it works. It's pretty easy. It works really well. Mike Jones says, use tree tangle foot for the base of the hive stand for ants. Try that out. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Ken, do you have any thoughts on hop guard? Uh, no, not yet. We have not used hop guard yet. Uh, food grade uh, varroa mite treatment in the hive, but we are going to probably this year, and we will let you know what we think about it. Um, you were just looking at that too, I think, just not that long ago. So um, I don't know. Have you used it or know anybody who has used it? I'm, I'm interested to see. Um, it would be nice if, if it was very effective, but um, I don't know yet. We have not used it, so I can't speak to it yet. Um, I have a green drone frame and they've started drawing on it. Holtz on YouTube. Good. Good. Glad you got that started. That'll be a, a good way to keep that Varroa, Varroa down. Um, is there an organic way to treat for mites? Yeah, you can do the powdered sugar roll. Uh, so you can do the, the, the dust roll to try to see how many mites you have, but you can also use powdered sugar in one of those old fashioned sifters. You just pull out a frame that's best with two people, pull out a frame that has a bunch of bees on it and give them a very light dusting of powdered sugar. Both sides of the frame, put the frame back in. Go to the next frame, pull it out. If there's a bunch of bees on it, do a light dusting on that. If you pull a frame out and there's no bees on it, just put the frame back in. Your objective is just to very lightly dust powdered sugar on the physical bees themselves, not on the equipment. What this does is twofold. One, it makes it harder for those Varroa destructors to hold on to the backs of the bees. So you'll see them fall off of the bees and they'll fall down. Hopefully you have a screen bottom board on so that they will fall out of the hive. And if you have a sticky board underneath your screen, you'll see them get stuck to the sticky board after you do your treatments. Um, secondly is it encourages the hive to groom each other. So they will clean that sh powdered sugar off of themselves but they can't get on their back to get that powdered sugar off. Bees in a hive, most bees in a hive, don't naturally groom each other. That's not a mechanism in a normal hive. There are some hives that do that, uh, but most don't. So that powdered sugar on the back of the bee that she can't get off makes another bee come over and go, hey, you missed a spot. And they'll take their proboscis and they'll clean that off. And in the process of cleaning that powdered sugar off, they will dislodge a lot of those varroa mites that are stuck on the backs of the bees. And you'll also see them fall down to the ground. So don't use it as your only method. Um, it, is, uh, um, it is effective, but it doesn't treat, if you will, a major problem. It's best if you do it. Uh, with a light problem or as a preventative uh, versus an actual treatment for a major infestation. You'll have to upgrade your stuff and get a little bit more aggressive with your with your treatments for the chemicals or the oxalic acid treatments if you have a, a heavy load of varroas in, in one of your hives. Um, but it's a good it's a good way just to kind of help keep that population down and help keep it from exploding. You can also do an alcohol wash. Yes, you can, Benjamin. You can do an alcohol wash. It'll kill the bees to do the alcohol wash, but it is another way of doing uh, doing a mite roll count to see if you have varroa mites in your hive. Ken, we used hop guard last year, spring and fall. It seemed to be effective. Bees made it and doing well this year. We mixed in other treatments in between spring and fall. Good. So, you know, uh, it's it's hard to measure, I guess, specifically hop guard, 
But if you put it in as part of your integrated pest management and it was one of your arsenals among many and your bees did good, then keep on doing that because that's the whole point, right? Uh, rotating your, your, your treatments and making sure that uh, you're keeping that population down, right? You can't eradicate varroa mite from your hive. You just have to keep the population low enough so that it doesn't harm your hive, especially in the fall. So we always ramp up our treatments in the fall, at least in the northern states. I don't know where everybody's watching from, but we're up here in southwest Michigan. Um, in the fall, when that, when that uh, incline of reproduction for the varroa is high, we do more treatments. We need to knock them down so that the bee cluster can go through winter without having a whole bunch of mites on the inside of that cluster, okay? Thank you for that feedback, Ken. Any other questions? What, what are we doing on time? Uh, we're not too bad, 3.39. We usually try to kick out an hour depending on how many questions we get and comments. Is everybody's bees doing okay? You, you should be on your second deep box. Some of you may be on your third if you've got a nuke this spring, um, at least in the Northern states. Um, if you got a package, you might be slightly behind. You might just be getting your second box on, but we looked through, oh, I don't know, seven or eight of our beehives last night while the weather here was really nice. And uh, man, oh man, they were full. Uh, there was a lot of nectar. There was a ton of brood. Um, I should have taken pictures, but I didn't. It's hard to with all your, you know, all your gear on. But one of our frames was just, I mean, there wasn't a dozen open cells on the whole frame. The brood was all the way out, all not to the edges of the frame, because if the brood was all the way out to the edges of the frame, I'd be starting to worry about maybe a swarm. But the brood was all the way out to the honey bridge. And then the honey bridge that was all the way up over the top, solid, absolutely solid. It was wonderful to see it. So everything seems to be doing good here in Southwest Michigan right now, but we'll see. We'll see if things dry up and we'll see what happens with the, we're still just slightly early to see our Varroa and our, and our hive beetle. We never know from year to year, which one of those is going to be the culprits, but <clears throat> I think I missed a question up higher. No, oh, no, I guess I didn't. I guess I forgot them all. Does anybody else have any other questions? We, we just covered a lot of ground right there. So getting frames of honey already. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on where you are, you know, in the, in the country or in the world, I have to, I have to remember we do these classes in our store uh, and we deal with mostly everybody from Michigan or Northern Indiana, Ohio, depending on if they, you know, they may have traveled a couple of hours for our classes, but we start to do these videos on YouTube and on Facebook Live, um, and especially our classes on the School of Beekeeping, where we're recording all of our classes in store and putting them online so you guys can still take our classes, especially with quarantine. Um, I have to remember when I'm doing those classes that uh, there are some people watching us from other countries and uh, uh, definitely other states. So we do our best to try to remember that. So, um, you know, there, there are some things like hive beetle that you don't have to, or excuse me, nozema, you don't have to deal with uh, down south as much as we may have to up here, although that doesn't exist much anymore. But um, there are some uh, in Lansing. Very good. Oh, good. You're not that far away then. Good. Glad your bees are doing good. Um, yeah, if you are watching us uh, on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, if you could maybe drop us a message on the comments and let us know where you're watching from too. Um, you know, we usually have a, a decent amount of watchers depending on the, the, the weather uh, in your area, but it's nice to kind of find out where everybody's watching us from too. So maybe drop us a comment and let us know uh, where you're watching from. And hopefully you're learning something when you watch these. I know they're only an hour and, and we do try to cover a lot of ground and, and answer questions that we can. Uh, you can always answer questions or ask questions on our Facebook page for Great Lakes Bee Supply. Um, you can go to our website, greatlakesbeesupply.com. You can see the link for our YouTube shows and our Facebook shows there. So if you know we're going to have a show, we always have one every Sunday at 3 p.m. Um, if you know we're going to have a show and you can't find us when you get on Facebook or YouTube, then just go to our website, uh, greatlakesbeesupply.com. And... Um, and find the links there to our shows. And of course, there's articles on there. Um, I've got a, a, one of our uh, people who writes content for our 
uh, website is working on the triple E right now. I hope to hear back from him this next week on what he's finding out because we have had some people, um, some people talking about triple E in the spring for the mosquitoes coming back with vengeance this year. So um, he's looking into that both for Southwest Michigan and the state. So he's going to put some content up on our website, article wise, talking about that a little bit too. Um, so there's a lot of stuff on our website. If you need a queen, we have uh, contacts on our website. You can always call us too, if you're in Southwest Michigan, at least, um, if you need to buy a new queen. Um, swarm, uh, swarm calls, if you live in the state of Michigan or even in Southern Indiana, or excuse me, Northern Indiana, um, we get phone calls relatively often, depending on the year for swarms, people who find a swarm and don't wanna kill it, but they don't have a way to get any, to, you know, to get it and remove it, um, either catch it or hive it up. So you can go to our website, you can sign up for our text alerts uh, or our email alerts or join our Facebook, like our Facebook page and follow us on that. And you'll see us post stuff uh, all over the state when somebody calls and says, I have a giant mass of bees in a tree in my front yard, can somebody come get them? So those are called freebies and everybody likes those, right? <laughs> Downriver, Rockwood, good, nice Ken. Bridgman, Michigan. Hi, Shannon. Thank you. Holland. Awesome. New York Upstate. Very nice. YouTube. Love your guys' website. I've been wanting to try some of your bee genetics in my yard for next year. Yeah, I tell you, our nukes this year were, uh, I, I don't know what everybody else thought about them, but I thought they were great. Um, in years past, They've been tolerable. They've been good. They've been normal. But this year, they seem to really be kicking, kicking, kicking behind. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they're doing. They seem to be doing really good. So we're really excited about that this year. And I, I think, um, you know, our general rule of thumb for Southwest Michigan, uh, we make all of our splits before the Fourth of July. Once the 4th of July passes, uh, we don't really make any splits anymore or make up any new hives. Um, it starts to put a time crunch on the bees to put enough honey away to make it through winter. So um, we, we, like to, we like to only make splits up until the 4th of July. So we may kick off a couple more splits uh, on our hives that are doing really good, especially all the hives that survived the winter. Um, our, our older hives, we probably will do another round of splits and then we're just going to uh, smooth sailing for the rest of the season. So Bridget and Mike Hicks, thanks for doing the live events. You're welcome. Hopefully it helps a little bit. And we know it's not applicable to everybody, depending on where you're at in your process of beekeeping or if you're new or if you're seasoned. Um, looks like I'm having some Facebook glitches, a couple, couple catches there where, I, where it freezes. Sorry about that. Hopefully you can hear us too. I usually try to check that before we get going. But uh, but yeah, we, we know it's not applicable to everybody, but um, you know, we, we, we got our education and we do what we do for our beekeeping and we try to answer questions as best we can, right? Remember, just because we say it, hi, CC on YouTube, um, just because we say it is so doesn't mean we are necessarily the experts. I mean, we like to know what we're doing and think we're doing pretty well with our hives. We'd like to share that, but there are always lots of different ways to do things. So, um, you know, we never say our way is the right way and nobody else's is the right way. You just have to find what works best for you, wherever you're located, the kinds of bees you have, um, you know, if you have any physical, you know, uh, um, issues where it prevents you from doing certain things, find your groove and find out what works best for you. We're just telling you what works good for us so that you get maybe a second opinion um, or, or uh, a different perspective on things too. Uh, something, make a video. I don't know, CC. I don't remember seeing an, uh, uh, a video that we did where we were dancing around. New shoes and your purple pants. You're don't know. He's not a good dancer. I'm not a good dancer. I don't, I don't know that we did that. So <laughs> all good. It's Facebook. Yes, it is. Uh, it's usually depending on our connection. We usually have pretty good connection in the classroom, but sometimes, sometimes it's not great. So, uh, what time we got here? Three forty-eight. Does anybody else have any other questions? 
If you don't have any other questions, uh, we have a live rock show coming up from six to eight today where we sell all of our rocks in our store online, uh, Facebook Live. So um, I'm gonna have to get ready for that here soon and start getting set up for that. But if, uh, if nobody else has any other questions, I will, uh, this is recorded on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you're watching on Facebook Live and you caught this halfway through, or, uh, or you happen to re-watch it, it's, it's going to be on our YouTube channel, um, not on our Facebook. I delete our lives after they're done on our Facebook. Um, so if you want to watch this or the rest of this, uh, go to our website, greatlakesbeesupply.com, and then find the, link to, um, find the link to our YouTube channel. And you can pop over there, subscribe to our YouTube channel, because you'll get notification every single time we go live that we're uh, that we're on and that we are live. So YouTube's really good for those notifications. So, oh man, look at all the comments. You guys woke back up. You're welcome, Stephanie. Benjamin, I have a new hive and wondering how long do you feed sugar water? Uh, well, Benjamin, it depends on where you're at, but um, I don't know where you're located. I don't remember if you said or not, but um, you shouldn't need sugar water now anywhere in the US. Um, they should be able to go. I mean, they may still be drinking it, but you shouldn't have to have it on. The only reason you would still give sugar water at this point is if you made a split or the hive had something go wrong and they lost population and they need a boost to try to get going again, or they're just really slow for some reason because they had something happen to the hive. Um, so, but otherwise, if it's just a normal hive and everything seems to be going good, you should not have to have sugar water on them anymore. Everybody keep in mind, too, about uh, the situation where you have two or three hives. If you have one hive that is going like crazy and you're worried about it getting too big, open that hive up, take a couple of big frames of cat brood out of it, dust the bees off it. Remember, you don't transfer bees. But take two of those frames and take them over and insert them into your weaker hives and that will increase the population as they emerge out and that will make the younger ones or the the less mature hives catch up to the big one and it will help slow the big one down a little bit just remember if you take two frames out of your strong hive to replace the frames that are in there remember you would always keep 10 frames in the hive so you can do that also to kind of even out your hives if you have two or three. You can always do that, and we do that all the time. Do you remember how much our deeps are? I, I want to say our deep, our deep boxes, our brood boxes are 26. 26.50, I think. 26.50 for our deep boxes. Doesn't matter if they're assembled or unassembled, and we don't make the cut grooves in for your fingers we put a piece of wood on the outside for a better grip too so if that matters to you or not but okay i think we're going to wrap it up for the day we hopefully we gave you some answers to your questions and didn't just cause you to have more uh questions again facebook or email is great you can always call us here at the store too we're open uh we're not open seven days a week right now i almost said that we normally are but right now we are open. Um, we are open Thursday and Friday from 10 until 4 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we are open Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and we are open Sunday from noon to 4. So hi, Carlos. Um, so, um, but you can call us and leave and leave us a message if you call outside of our our scheduled uh, times. Our stores are uh, reduced hours right now still because of the quarantine. We're, we're easing back into that stuff. We're not, we're not jumping right in um, cannonball style. So, um, but anyway, uh, you can always call us and leave us a message and we'll call you back if you have questions. Facebook is great. Look at, I, as I was saying, Facebook is great. It's locked up. Facebook is good. Uh, if you jump on our Facebook, find us on Great Lakes Bee Supply on our Facebook and share pictures and share videos with us. Um, we can diagnose a lot of things that may or may not be going wrong with a hive. If you just snap us some pictures of some of your frames and things, we can pretty much look at those and tell you, no, nope, everything looks good, or uh, this is this might be a problem, do this. Um, so you can always ask questions, things like that. We're, we're sadly on Facebook a lot uh, for work. 
So that's always a good outlet for us too. So, all right, we're going to sign off. We appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, we will be back on again next week, next Sunday at three o'clock again. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and communicate with us on our website via our website or Facebook. And uh, everybody have a good weekend. And leave a comment. Let us know where you're from if you're watching this as a recorded, just so we know uh, where people are seeing it. So thanks again. Have a good rest of the weekend. Bye, everybody. Bye. That was good.